In this lesson, I'll walk you through the layout and some of the functionality of Revit's user interface. Revit is similar to other Autodesk products, but unique in that most of the functionality is contained in the interface. By clicking on this blue R on the top left, I can open the Revit application menu. It contains functions such as New, Open, Save, and Save As. This menu is not as expansive as other Autodesk products, as many of the functions are found in other areas of the user interface. Clicking again closes the menu. Here at the top is the Quick Access Toolbar. There are a few important tools found here. For example, this button allows me to measure between two references or along an element in Revit. I can also switch between different views. For example, by clicking this drop-down menu, I can easily access the default 3D view. There are a lot of little tools in the Revit interface that will become more familiar as you gain experience. Here is the info bar. Notice, I can type a keyword or phrase and search by clicking on the binoculars. This is helpful to quickly find something you need. Underneath this is a familiar tab-driven ribbon, each tab containing different tools. I am running the full version of Revit, so along with the Architecture tab, I also have a tab for Structure with its various functions, and one for Systems, which is Revit MEP, with its various functions. Since this is an introduction to Revit Architecture 2016 specifically, I am primarily going to be working in the Architecture tab. You can see it has architecture-specific panels and icons. Like AutoCAD, you can still create sticky panels by clicking and dragging panels from the ribbon into the graphics area. However, I won't move any into the graphics area because they can easily obscure the model view and information. Though these have been mentioned before, here on the left is the Properties panel, which contains information about the current selected element or view. If I click in the Graphics area, it shows information about the current 3D view. If I want information about a certain element, I can simply click on it. For example, if I click on the white solar panels here, it shows up in the Properties panel as a model group. Again, these are the properties for these specific solar panels. To deselect an element, you can either click in the blank space of the graphics area or press Escape. Revit also provides detailed information about some of its features. Selecting one of these trees shows me that it is a deciduous Lombardi poplar, is 40 feet tall, and is in a planting category. Information about the selected feature or view is contained in the Properties palette, which I'll explore more in detail as I work with some Revit models. Moving over to the right side of the interface, you can access the Project Browser, which organizes all of the project's views and sheets. To make it easier to navigate in this window, the categories can be minimized by clicking the minus icon, which helps keep the window from getting cluttered. I can now easily navigate through all of my project views and will expand the 3D Views tab. For now, I'll double click to take a look at the kitchen. As you can see, the view opens up in the graphics area and the properties palette identifies it as a 3D view. Right-clicking on a view brings up a menu where I can do a number of things, such as duplicating the view, duplicating it with detailing, saving it to the project as an image file, or renaming the view. I can also select all instances visible within the view or in the entire project, which is helpful when working with specific elements and families in a project. The project browser not only allows me to easily navigate through my project, but contains a large amount of useful information as well. At the bottom of the screen, similar to all other Autodesk products, you can find a status bar with various bits of information, such as the name of the family, the sheet name, progress bars, and more depending on the situation. At the bottom of the graphics area are your view controls. The best way to demonstrate the functions of the view controls is by inspecting a plan view. I'll select the Level 1 plan view, and now I can see the first level project features. Here, I can change the amount of details for the level by choosing Coarse Medium or Fine. 
I do this by navigating to a feature, like this wall, zooming in for a better view, and changing the detail setting. Notice that for a simple wall like this, changing the detail setting has no effect. If I zoom into this glass facade wall and change the detail to coarse, you can see that the view doesn't change, but the detail level in the properties palette does. In this case, the view setting for the element is set. However, if it was a brick wall, a coarse selection might show two lines only, a medium setting might show the cavity, and fine detail would show the cavity with all of the wall detailing. Next to this is your Graphic Display Options tab. You can change the visual style of the view to wireframe, shaded, or consistent colors. As you can see, each display option changes how the project is viewed. The view settings on this control bar allow me to control my views and navigate through Revit more quickly and effectively. Those are the basics for the Revit interface, and as I walk through the course, I'll cover each section in a bit more detail and learn more about its functionality.